Hello YouTube, it's Stas Gregor, and welcome back to another Gen 2 in Review. Today we are going to be talking about Gen 2 overlays. Overlays are what you might consider external repositories of applications that aren't in the Gen 2 native portage tree. To be able to manage and use overlays within Gen 2, you must first install an application called Layman. Very easy to do so inside of your command line interface console. You type in emerge dash A for ask, V for verbose, Layman. And it of course searches for dependencies and pulls up what it finds. I'm bringing this up so I can discuss with you some of the use flags that Layman has because these are things you may want to go ahead and enable. We're going to go ahead and say no for now because I already have it installed. But what I want to talk to you about is the fact that Layman and the overlays utilize different repository structures such as Subversion, Git, CVS, Bazaar, Mercurial, Mercurial etc. I already have, of course, Bazaar, CVS, Git, and Subversion set up. And if you wanted to utilize these in your build, the best thing to do is type in echo, quotation. You want, for lack of a better term, the fully qualified name of the program minus the version. So do a copy and a paste, a space. And say, for instance, you want to turn on Bazaar, CVS, Git, and Subversion, you just type those into that string. CVS, Git, Subversion, end quotation, pipe it to etc portage package dot use, and hit enter. Now make sure when you're using this to use the double right arrow. If you ever mess up and use a single right arrow, that ends up overwriting a file completely and putting whatever you've echoed into the file and deleting everything else in there. If you use the double right direction arrow right there, it appends the file and puts that at the bottom of the file. I already have it in there. I don't need to worry about it but that's how you can easily add and change the use flags for a specific program before you rebuild it. After you've done this, of course, you would then type in emerge-avlayman, verify that those use flags have been changed. In most cases, if you don't have Git or Subversion or CVS or any of those that you chose installed, it'll go ahead and install those as dependencies of Layman and build Layman off of that and then you have it taken care of. The second thing you need to do before you can utilize Layman is to edit your make.conf. Now in newer versions of Gen2 they've moved the make.conf file from the etc folder into the etc portage folder. So what you need to do here is nano w slash etc portage pa not package make Conf. and you need to add this line here source slash var slash lib slash layman slash make dot conf and what that pretty much does is point your make configuration to the make configuration for layman which sets everything up for where your layman directories are located how to find packages and install them from the overlay directory oh, get out of there now, all of those type of things need to be utilized as super user or as the root. In my case, as I've explained in a few times, I don't have emerge set up where I have to type in sudo emerge every time because I've created aliases. And kind of as a quick look, if you look at my bash file I've created here, I've got some aliases here. First off, I set the terminal to blank out at zero, turning it off, because I hate it when my terminal, when I'm compiling code, 
10 minutes later it goes blank and I don't know what's going on. I like to see that code constantly compiling without having to worry about touching a key. So I always set the terminal blank off, turn it off. I always set these aliases like ls equals ls dash dash color, emerge equals sudo emerge, Wi-Fi. I have a problem with my Wi-Fi always shutting down on me. So I've created a Wi-Fi command that all I have to do is type in Wi-Fi and it executes and runs and restarts my wireless LAN. And same thing with reboot, sudo reboot, sudo nano dash w for s edit. And sometimes I remember I have that, sometimes I don't. This little help me thing kind of sets up a, a text file that reminds me what some of these aliases I've created. Same thing with halt. It just makes it so I don't always have to type in sudo yeah, and set that up. But uh, just for those who might be wondering why I don't type in sudo emerge or you didn't see me go in because I'm not, I'm logged in for instance it says up here as my DOS Gregor account. Now if I'd logged in with sudo or su then it would have changed this here to root so I remind, remember that I'm in root instead of my user account. But it's always best to do as much as you can outside of the root and inside your your own user to, to protect yourself. So once you've edited your make.conf, you've installed layman of course, then you can use the layman command. And to see what available overlays there are, you can use layman dash capital L and that will get you a list of all these laymans or not layman, I'm sorry, all these overlays. And as you can see, there is a huge list. And you might wonder, you know, what all does that help you with? Well, to give you an example, OpenShot I enjoy to use as a video editor. It's not normally in the portage tree. So I must install that from an overlay. If I do emerge dash AV open shot you will find that it says what version I have available and it also tells me that I'm utilizing it out of a specific overlay in this case the lumen overlay is where it's pulling open shot from now the way I found this is by opening up an internet browser and going to an overlay search engine that I have found for Gen 2, and this is very handy. So I'm going to pause the video while I get that up and running so I can show you that search engine, and then I can go forward. So this really, I don't believe, is sponsored by Gen 2, because it's at gpo.zugania.org. at z-u-g-a-i-n-a.org. And here's where I find a lot of times when I'm looking for a package that Portage comes back and says is not available. In this case, OpenShot. I'll type that in and it tells me, okay, you're looking for media video OpenShot, say yes. And now it shows me all the different overlays. OpenShot 1.4.3 for AMD 64 and 386 computers or x86 computers can be found at R3PEC at FM Overlay, at Lumen, at Icolos, a number of Calculate. Now, if you remember, I did a version of Calculate Linux, which was a very good version of Gen 2 based. You know, there is a overlay for that as well. Their most recent version, of course, is 1.42. And you can find, if you're looking for a specific version, if you're looking for something else, all of these different overlays that you can grab and I'm using the Lumen overlay for right now. I also thought for some reason that there was a Sabayon overlay for this particular one but uh, that must have been for a different package I was looking for. So say for instance you want to install this, you want to go ahead and grab it from the Lumen overlay and we know that it's there. What we would do here get out of that, is we would type in Layman we want to do a dash A for add and type in lumen. Now I already have it there so it's going to give me an error that I've already got it installed. And for some reason if you decided that you'd installed a repository that you didn't want then you would use the layman dash D 
and for grins we'll just go ahead and remove lumen and I do believe you need to use sudo for this so it deletes it from the overlay and now it's not going to be there now if we wanted to add it which I'm, I'm going to need because I don't want to lose open shot it goes ahead and adds it updates everything for the objects brings it on in and now we should of course like when I did the emerge we should see that now OpenShot is available. Always be careful when using overlays because when you do an emerge dash A for ask, V for verbose, uh, U for update, capital N for new use and capital D for deep world, that command which is normally what you would use after updating your portage tree will look at your portage tree but it will also look at all the new applications that are found within your portage overlays sometimes a portage overlay has made a specific program to be stable but your main gen 2 hasn't yet in which case it is possible to accidentally update programs coming from an overlay that you don't want to be updated. I found that out by using the Sabayon overlays one time and I was doing an update of some things and I wondered why in the world are these packages getting updated and I looked at them more closely and realized they were getting updated from the Sabayon repository or the overlay and I didn't want that because that could break other things on my Gen 2 box. So always be very careful when you do use an overlay that you're not accidentally allowing other applications to get upgraded during a world upgrade, upgrade that's coming from an overlay instead of your portage tree. You really only want to use portage overlays for those one or two file programs that you just can't find in the main portage tree such as in this case wanting me wanting to get open shot you know there's other programs for instance that you may want a specific version as I said that the portage tree might have gotten rid of and you still require or want to try out a specific uh, version in which case you may need to set some mask flags to, to make this work now one other thing to kind of look at and I saw this the other day when I was doing one of the other videos when I was talking about masking and unmasking if we look at my mask area slash etc portage package dot oops, package dot unmask there was this right here now I unmasked Eclipse SDK software development kit because I wanted to be able to install it on this particular box for development. And I was reading here, for instance, that a more recent source build maintained by the community is available in the Seden overlay, or a more recent binary is available in the Java overlay, which is what got me thinking that maybe I ought to do a video about overlays. It would be most advantageous, probably for myself, to go ahead and add the Seden overlay and actually pull it from there instead of having to unmask the version even within Portage. And as you can see, they're actually recommending that here in these lines over using the Portage version that I have available. So that's always something to look at and read when unmasking a specific application. And that's another reason why I like to use the auto unmask that right feature because it does put these extra comments into your use flag or your unmasked package and other portage packages that it uses that give you some inv important information about the packages that you're unmasking or packages that you're uh, setting up the AMD tilde option for because they're not quite stable yet etc. Well I hope that explains layman I hope that explains the overlays and why sometimes when you don't find something in Portage you have to go to the overlay to find it. S very seldom should you really ever have to go somewhere, pull down the source from scratch 
and build it without some sort of an e-build. There are many, many programmers out there who have created their e-builds, put them in an overlay, and it's best to look for an overlay with an e-build that sets up all the dependencies for you and helps build that application based on the Gen 2 environment instead of just installing it straight from its own source code. It really helps with maintaining the system in the long run. I want to thank you all for watching. If you have any questions about layman, overlays, that sort of thing, feel free to get a hold of me and ask me. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having when you're watching this, I appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day, time of day, whatever it is. Thank you again. We'll talk to you later. Until next time, bye.